This is Kat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I'm here today to do a post review of a recent completion. Um, I actually kitted this up ages ago. I kitted it up like last summer ready to go away on holiday but I never got around to working on it until more recently. I started this, um, when did I start it? I started this on the 5th of May and I finished it on the 25th of May. So, oh, okay, sorry. That was Harry uh, knocking over some boxes of things for my shop. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> And I had this kit for a while before that. I, it actually came out in early 2022. Um, and it was a weird one. It came out originally, um, Diamond Art Club started doing these pop-up offers at checkout, um, where you would check out with something else and then it would pop up and say, do you want this? And it, like, I heard of people getting offered it and I was a big Katrina Coltes fan, but it never offered me it. <laughs> And I was like, no, I hope I don't miss it. Um, Harry, please. Here's Harry for the fans. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to leave paw prints all over my, my kit, aren't you? I didn't think that through. But eventually they did actually offer it for sale. And I leapt on that so quickly. Um, so it was Mystery 38, if you follow them that way, and otherwise it was Mystery Kit Abstract Animal by Katrina Coltes. Obviously, this is going to contain spoilers. I assume you haven't clicked on the video unless you want to see what this painting looks like, but just, you know, be warned. Just in case. <laughs> um, and what else do I have to say? It was quite small that appealed to me because mystery kits are often really large. Um, they're often big and detailed pieces. And this one was only 55.8 by 55.8. Obviously it's square because Diamond Art Club only does square kits for mysteries so that you can't see the background. And I think that's all the sort of starting ab mini bits I had to cover. So let me show you it. This is the first one as well, the first mystery kit that I've done with the coloured background that Diamond Art Club offers. So I've only done two from them in total. Uh, one was the abstract mystery from Briss Bazaar, which I have post reviews and other things for on the channel. And then the second one is this one. So if you don't know what I mean, I will put a picture up on screen now. Um, this is what a Diamond Art Club mystery kit looks like these days. So you'll notice that there are random colours showing, um, but the symbols might be on different colour backgrounds. And what it is, is basically to distract your eye. It's so it's not immediately obvious when you look at the canvas what the image is, like it sometimes was with the black and white canvases that they started using for mysteries. Um, so it sort of disguises things a little bit. It's also a bit easier on the eyes for people who maybe suffer with eye strain. And I've got to be honest, I was daunted before I started this kit. It kind of messed with my brain a little bit looking at that. Um, but I knew that I would probably adapt if I started working on it. And a friend was egging me on and saying, don't worry, you'll be used to it in no time. And if you're worried about it like I was, I have to reassure you, I got used to it so quickly, literally within the first section. I was like, oh no, this is fine. You just have to kind of retrain your brain to really focus on looking for the symbol rather than the symbol and the color, and then you're fine. Right, that aside, now I actually am gonna show you the canvas. So here it is. Is this not absolutely stunning? It has so many of the things that I love in diamond painting. It's got the abstracty feel. It's got an animal. I do really enjoy animals in diamond painting. It's got a color palette I really, really enjoy of blues and purples and greens and that kind of thing. I mean, Katrina Coltes's art is, is just stunning to me. I have several of her pieces. This is actually the first one I've worked on. And I think it is probably going to remain one of my favorites because I enjoyed this painting so, so, so much. 
Once I got over that little blip of nerves at the start where I was thinking, oh, is it really gonna throw me with the colored background? And I realized that that was gonna be okay. It was just so much fun. Um, so it has 48 colors. So a decent amount, but not overwhelming. And I would say it was not too much confetti, actually. Looking at it, it looks like it really would be. And I mean, it's it's it wasn't a color blocking piece either, but it was a good combination of the two, which is what I always look like, which is what you'll often see on the kits that I choose to work on. Um, and particularly in the bottom, part it, it seemed to go really quickly because there's a lot of kind of small blocks of color and not many bits where you're changing 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 the color and then these side sections have quite a lot of blocking and then further up I mean it doesn't show it to look at it but I remember feeling like it went a bit slower further up so maybe there are a few more subtle color changes that aren't immediately visible there I can hear Harry in the background battering at the cat door. It's raining, so it's a bit wet, so he doesn't like it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I just, I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. It, it felt like it went by quite quickly. And I mean, it was just short of three weeks that it took me. And for me, that's pretty quick going. Um, I definitely had some time during that period as well where I wasn't able to work on it. Um, so yeah, that for me is quite a quick finish and I enjoyed that as well. I enjoyed the satisfaction of just getting through it and having a, a completion quite quickly. It had four ABs and you'll probably be able to see a lot of sort of extra glitzy glowy bits from those. In particular, there is a lot of white. Um, you'll see it more when I pan over it in a little bit. Um, and there were just sort of smaller amounts of other colors speckled for it. There weren't any other special drills. Um, this predates fairy dust drills, I believe, which are the other one that gets used a lot. Um, sorry, if you can hear meowing, that's the app on my phone that tells me when a cat has come in or out through the cat door. And for some reason it keeps meowing at me, <laughs> even though Harry has just gone out and he's only gone out once. <laughs> um, Oh, there's some nice blue ones as well. I, oh, I feel like I'm gabbling because I'm looking at it and I'm just, I'm really overwhelmed again by how much I enjoyed this. So I'm gonna refer to my notes and be a bit more considered from now on. <laughs> I loved, as I said, that it was a smaller kit and that definitely motivated me seeing how quickly I was getting through it. The drills fit beautifully. Um, I actually, it had a combination. If you are, upon how DAC's drills have evolved. They've been through a few changes and they went from drills that, square drills that had a mixture of nine and 13 facets to drills that had only 13 facets to drills that had only 20 facets. And this is from somewhere in the sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? The transition from the 13 facet drills to the 20 facet drills. So I've got a mixture of those two. And I actually had quite a soft spot for the 13 facet drills. I found them really nice to work with, but they were a little more trashy. So I think that that's why they moved on. And also to get drills that were a bit shinier. Anyway, the point is I've got a mixture so I can feel both textures as I run my hand over it because the, the 20 facet ones have a little pyramid shape. So they're just ever so slightly pointier. And I think it actually works quite well when you have a mixture of both because it gives you two different textures to catch the light. And it is just beautifully shiny and shimmery, isn't it? Um, I When I was working through it, I felt like I didn't have that much in the way of trash drills, but then I've opened up my little trash drill pot. And I'd say there's quite a lot. I always, 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 always caveat this This at this point with saying I'm fussy um, as well as tabs that you kind of have to get rid of because otherwise they won't fit on, on the snug grid. I also get rid of anything that has any kind of holes or blemishes that I spot because I'm fussy and I don't like little holes anyway because I have trypophobia, fun fact. <laughs> Those, you know when you get a drill that has loads and loads of little holes on it, it makes me feel ugh. Anyway. So there's lots of those. And there's also just the random drills that I drop when I'm working and I put in here. Um, so it's the true 
proper trash as someone else would find it is less than it looks like um but there's there's a good amount and i have to say my one criticism about this kit is that i had quite a few colors that ran low let me get in here and show you oh i had two kitted up in here so that's actually from a mooney made kit i'm still working on so I'm looking in here and there's just, actually, do you know what? I say that and all of the ones I'm pulling out to show you, <laughs> I mean, there's some that don't have many, but they are colors that were in it not very much. But, 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 this is the first ever kit from Diamond Art Club that I ran out of a color on. It had to happen one day <laughs> and I got through so many Diamond Art Club kits without that being a problem that it is it's not a concern for me it's just one of those things it was this color here um I don't know whether it was particularly trashy or I just didn't have enough um but I did run out of that and I realized as I was starting the top row that I just I did not have enough of it. I actually was lucky enough to be able to get these within the UK. I'm in a Facebook group called DAC Fans UK, which I highly recommend to any fans of Diamond Art Club because it's a really nice group for de-stashing and chatting and like raffles and all sorts of things. Anyway, um, I had a warranty for this kit. I did buy it directly from Diamond Art Club, but rather than email them and ask them to send a small number of drills all the way across the ocean to me here in the UK. I just checked to see if I could get any in the UK first. Um, it's something we quite commonly do because it's a lot quicker and easier and saves air miles and all the rest. Um, and someone was very kind and sent those to me. So I was able to get it finished nice and easily. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, I was only short by maybe 20 or so drills of that color in the end and I dare say I could have found something similar from my stash but I like to follow the chart exactly so yeah it, <laughs> it was good to be able to get it finished with the correct color so what do you think guys I feel like this one might be less well known because of the way it was released like I mentioned before like it never had a big Saturday release or actually mysteries tend to be Wednesdays don't they but it never had a proper release it was offered to people on checkout then they put it on the site but without that much fanfare and I knew because I was you know stalking the Facebook group to find it so I don't know how big a run there was of this one I wonder if if it was a bit smaller maybe and because it was a limited edition edition even because mystery kits always are it is of course long gone now but yeah beautiful genuinely one of my favorite ones I've done recently um and this and Floyd the Fabulous that I did before have really got me back into the diamond painting bug. I was in a bit of a slump a couple of months back and just feeling like was I sort of losing some of the love of the hobby? Never all of it. I still wanted to do it but I had less of a drive for it. And this one and Floyd the Fabulous that I did before and have a post review of have confirmed to me it's just no you put in front of me a kit that I really really enjoy where everything comes together between the image and the colours I'm working with and the balance of confetti and colour blocking and the drills fitting well and all of those things that I enjoy and I am in heaven and I will sit there for hours or as long as my my muscles will let me um so yeah absolutely over the moon with this one any Katrina Coltes fans out there that maybe weren't aware of this one I, I'm interested to know how much it maybe slipped under the radar because of the way it was released um, because I know she's she's a popular artist so yeah let me know if you haven't actually come across this one before so I am going to do a quick pan over this so you can see it more up close and personal and then I'll just come back quickly to say goodbye
there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this with me almost as much as I enjoyed working on it. <laughs> I do, I'm, I'm just admiring it through the viewfinder because it's stunning in person, but as these things always are, the rendering is just perfection when you stand back a little bit, which is what looking through the viewfinder does. In person, the deer really kind of blends into the background and you can only get a hint of it. And then in the viewfinder, I can really see its outline quite clearly and its wonderful antlers. It's interesting to me that they called this, um, what, what did they call it? Abstract animal, definitely on the abstract front. And yes, there is an animal, but it's not really the focal point of the painting. So yeah, considering that Katrina Coltes almost always features animals in her paintings and often they're a really big focal part of it. That's, that's quite funny, but yeah, it's beautiful. I'm happy. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like on it. And if you haven't already subscribed and you've enjoyed what I've done here, please consider subscribing too. I would love to have you join me. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye.